Neo are now putting into mass production their semi-solid state battery pack, which is literally mind-blowing. It's amazing. So this will be available as part of their battery swap service in a few months. So this is happening right now. So this battery offers energy density of 260 watt hour per kilogram and provides range, actual range that they've actually done if you drive it in very good conditions, 1,055 kilometers. And I think there was a video on the internet last year, I think it was, where the CEO or the founder of NEO actually put a camera on the car and drove it 1,040 or 45 kilometers. So they can actually do it. And I think somebody else, and it, he only drove it until the battery went down to 3%. So. For comparison, I'm going to dub the original BYD Blade battery the V1 Blade battery from 2020 from BYD. That uses the LFP chemistry. That has a density of about 140 to 150 watt hour per kilo. That's very good. You know, that's pretty good. And they're very, very safe. The V2 battery, which I announced the other day, that is coming in August or so. That is expected in August. That's 190 watt hour per kilo. And that is even better so that's almost 30 percent up in density uh and it, it is brilliant it really is so this battery tech is always changing so i'll bring you a little bit into uh, the loop in case you haven't uh googled some stuff or you just feel like you haven't yet learned a little bit a little bit about semi-solid state batteries for example so the differences between semi-solid state batteries and solid state solid state you can't really go and buy them in anything semi-solid state batteries are now fit for purpose for cars and they are going in neo cars and then maybe in the next three four years if other companies decide to put them in their cars if they somehow get permission to do that then you will start seeing them in other cars too hey folks welcome back to the channel so it's it's really fantastic to see so many people joining the channel Le clearly lots and lots of new ev owners and uh they're finding my videos and you're watching it's very nice to see you thank you for joining uh please if you've got any questions just put them in the comments you'll probably get a reply from someone else before i reply simply because there are just too many comments every day i don't have time to reply to all of them i do read them but i don't reply to all of them but it's, that's only because there's just too many neo make fantastic cars i've always liked their cars Founded in 2014, uh, they have been bringing their cars to Europe. Uh, very, very common in China, especially with the battery swap service. I'm not really a big fan of the battery swap service, but it is something that a lot of people buy into in China, for example. Uh, their cars almost entirely offered uh, with 75 and 100 kilowatt hour batteries. And uh, customers can also buy a car, an electric car, without a battery, but you have to subscribe to their monthly payments to uh, use the, the swapping service so you can swap your batteries as you drive around. Soon, uh, Neo branded vehicles will get another option for long trips, which offers a capacity of 150 kilowatt hours and weighs basically the same, or 20 kilos more actually, uh, than the 100 kilowatt hour one. So basically, it weighs the same, but now instead of it being 100 kilos, kilowatt hours, it's 150 kilowatt hours. Amazing. So it will be available only via the subscription. Like I said, the mass production of this battery pack has started in China, which is awesome. It was designed by the people that actually supply Neo with their battery cells, the actual chemistry. So in that company is called We Leon New Energy Technology, and that's in Beijing. Uh, basically, they act as the people that just give Neo the batteries. Neo actually have people in house that build from those cells the battery packs that then bolt into the car so that's how this works according to neo the 150 kilowatt hour semi-solid state battery cells uh, as in the actual cells themselves have energy density of 360 watt hour per kilo which is incredible and then the whole battery pack when you've put it in and you've plumbed all the, the cooling in and you've put all the glue and all the other stuff and all the plastic and all the metal and the you know that then takes it down to 260 watt hour per kilogram density when it's built and ready to go into the car so another feature as well i don't know what they mean by this but apparently the battery pack is uh, has cooling that is six or a cooling system that is six times stronger compared to ordinary batteries so the weight of the 150 kilowatt hour battery as well is uh, 676 kilograms which is literally just 20 kilograms more than neo's 100 kilowatt hour battery pack so basically they have royally improved haven't they majorly improved also for comparison uh, the byd battery 
that is 135.5 kilowatt hour. Uh, that is LFP chemistry. That weighs 903 kilos, I believe it is. So we, Leon and Neo, have done an incredible job with their batteries, especially to get them to pass all the safety tests. And when they go into mass production, we'll see over the next five or 10 years if they are any better than uh, you know longevity to, in regards to longevity than BYD's batteries. So over the decades, there hasn't really been a huge catalyst to spare on this uh, massive wave of uh, investment in battery chemistry. It's literally like we've been seeing this last five or ten years. Um, we've been seeing, you know, lithium ion batteries in everything. Of course, they're in our phones. They're in a, a drill in our headphones. I've got some Sony headphones here. You have lithium ion chemistry from uh, roughly, it's from the 80s, I think, isn't it? The mid 80s when that came around, which basically doubled energy density in batteries overnight. Uh, but then if we look at this graph, we can see that EV sales have been going up and up and up and up. And then the last few years, they rocketed up. They, they knew this was coming. And that is why four, five, six years ago, there was a huge load of investment into battery chemistries. They've been working hard to get these chemistries on, you know, on point, and then they can put them through the tests. And then that's where we've arrived. We've arrived where we have now, basically. So we have LFP chemistry, and we have uh, semi-solid state batteries that are now approved. And there was one from CATL as well that was approved with, uh, I think it was, was it 500 watt hour per kilo? Put it in the comments if you know, I can't remember. It was pretty much twice what you can get from Tesla at best. It was really, really good. So we're seeing major improvements. So what we think we knew about batteries three, four, five years ago is just now different. It's just now, it's that's that quick. It's incredible. So this is exactly the reason why over the past few years, battery manufacturers are coming out with these new chemistries. I think it's interesting that the flaws of the batteries and the understanding from everyone about how we look after our batteries is becoming common knowledge. That was not the case 10 years ago. It just wasn't the case. Uh, we currently use a lot of lithium ion batteries with liquid electrolyte for lithium, uh, for the ions to go through or pass through. Uh, that is what we've been using for decades. It isn't the most up-to-date chemistry, like I said. LFP chemistry, I think, is probably the most up-to-date chemistry. That's the safest one. It can take a nail penetration test if you're talking about the BYD blade cells. And then um, we have, and also you can overcharge them 360%, put them in a furnace to over two or 300 degrees Celsius, and they don't set on fire. Uh, incredible chemistry. So I do not know if the semi-solid state batteries have the same resilience, but they are known to be safer, quite a bit safer. Uh, the semi-solid state batteries now passed lots of tests as of last year, and they've been deemed safe enough to go into our vehicles. Uh, but the solid state batteries, not yet there. That is a very tricky thing to get right, and they've been working on this for years, actually. There are differences to other parts of the batteries, uh, but the main difference, I think, uh, pertains to the battery title is that the electrolyte in the chemistry is not liquid, it's not solid. So it's not as thin as a gel, it's thicker than a gel. And I would say you could say, consider it something like silicon, for example. It's not gel, it's not solid, definitely not liquid. Uh, and then also the actual electrolyte, in, uh, the um, electrodes inside and other things, there are differences to the chemistry inside and the, the things they use. I'm not an expert in battery chemistry. It is incredibly tough to talk about it. Uh, battery, basically, a new up-to-date chemistry that will now serve to raise the bar for competition, which is what we need, I think. Uh, so if you remember when Nissan or the Nissan Leaf was fairly new to people, generally people didn't understand about the importance of having proper, proper thermal management on their chemistry. Now we can see that the heat is the number one factor that destroys chemistry, and I think this is really good to know. Neo didn't disclose when the 150 kilowatt hour battery will go live, but Neo did say on social media that the official launch is scheduled for the second quarter of this year. We're now four months into this year, so probably in the next two to three months, I would imagine. So the fact that the mass production has started hints that this battery will become available at Neo's power swap stations literally in 12 within 12 weeks, I would really hope. I would think the best time to launch it is in summer, uh, as a lot of tourists go to uh, Xinjiang, I think you say, it's a western Chinese province. 
so you might remember as well recently that the Neo co-founder and CEO, CEO uh, William Lee, tested the uh, Neo ET7. Really nice car. It's a big sedan with this battery, 150 kilowatt hour battery, semi solid state battery. He drove 1,044 kilometers in one video, you know, and it and he stopped when it had three percent remaining. And so someone else actually went further than that and got an extra, and I think they got 1,100 and something kilometers by the time it actually cut out. So during the test, uh, William Lee shared that this battery was previously tested on a route from Kunming to Beihai, I think you say, if you're Chinese, correct me, uh, traveling 1,145 kilometers on one charge. So it is the world record for a mass produced electric vehicle to travel on one charge it's incredible. It really is incredible. This is the stuff that gets me excited, honestly. If you cut that battery in three and make it a 50 kilowatt hour battery and you put that into a BYD Seagull, then you would end up with a very good range. That's, you know, several hundred kilometers. That's amazing. And it wouldn't weigh very much at all. So it's fairly obvious to me that, uh, you know, in 10 years from now, we will absolutely be looking back at our cars that have a 40 kilowatt hour or a 60 kilowatt hour battery as a bit old fashioned or one of the early ones, I think. Uh, we have the BYD Blade two, uh, V2 chemistry batteries coming soon. That's 27% more density, uh, which I believe is going to be in August. Semi solid state batteries come with a few extra benefits, like I've said, over the classic liquid lithium variants. Their standout feature is enhanced safety and stability, with the semi solid electrolyte being. Uh, less vulnerable to leaks and less likely to experience thermal runaway, which is crazy. That significantly lowers the risk of fire or explosions. Uh, if that, even though the you know EVs are twenty times less likely to be involved in a a, a battery fire, uh, it is good to know, isn't it? So these batteries also possess a greater energy density, and that allows them to hold more energy in a given space, which is especially advantageous in EVs, obviously, and things like phones. That would be pretty good if you could put a little bit of this in your phone and have a, you know, a, a day and a half's charge rather than a day's charge. That would be pretty good, wouldn't it? So the semi-solid state batteries are a greener option. I would never say that batteries are green, obviously, but you could say that they're a greener option and can be made from non-toxic metals that uh, lessen their environmental footprint, which is one of the, the, the selling points for LFP chemistry, really, otherwise known as lithium iron phosphate. There is no cobalt, for example. Thanks for watching, folks. If you're a battery chemist, please feel free to explain better in the comments. Please go easy on me. Uh, I know that even if you spend 10 minutes talking about the chemistry stuff, that is way too simply put. This stuff is incredibly dense, like incredibly complex. I know this. Um, and I've watched a lot of videos. I've spoke to battery chemists. I know how complicated it is.